Hello. In this video, I thought that we would take the antiderivative of the relatively common trigonometric function tangent of x. So we're trying to find the integral of tan x dx. And to do this, we're going to get into a little bit of u substitution. And, you know, this derivation is reasonably easy as long as you don't let yourself get sidetracked by ideas such as integration by parts that will just make things complicated. So all we need to do is, well, not all we need to do, but the first step in this process is redefining this as the integral of sine of x over cosine of x dx. So that this is, this of course, being the tangent of x. Okay, so what can we do from there? Well, I already said that we're doing u substitution, so that should come as a pretty big hint, uh, and we will indeed be doing some u substitution. So when you're doing u substitution, you tend to look for a function that is in this integral that we're dealing with, this indefinite integral, um, whose derivative is kind of like in the numerator of that indefinite integral. And you know, it's not always the same case, but there is something that can be seen pretty quickly by looking at this. If we say that u is equal to cosine of x, and hence du dx is equal to negative sine of x dx, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, uh, I gave it away, du will be equal to uh, negative sine of x dx for all intents and purposes, though the whole multiplying both sides by the dx thing is not quite what's going on there. I'm going to leave it at that. This is, this is what's going to help us solve this problem, is defining u and du in these ways. Okay, so now this is u substitution after all, so we should probably substitute some things. Notice we've got a cosine of x down here, so that's helpful. But where's our negative sine of x dx? Well, we don't have one. We have a sine of x dx. So how can we, how can we change that? How can we change our negative sine of x dx? Well, we can just multiply by negative one, right? Except we can't actually change the function we're dealing with. So I'm just gonna multiply by negative one on the outside too. That way they'll cancel out. But now we can clearly see our negative sine of x dx. It's finally there. Okay, so now how is the new function defined? So now we have the negative integral of What's negative sine of x dx here? That's just going to be du. du divided by cosine of x. Well, that's just going to be u. Divided by cosine of x. I'm sorry. Divided by u. du divided by u. Because we're getting things in terms of u. That's why we're substituting for u. And this, of course, simplifies into the negative integral of 1 over u du. And this is an integral that is pretty simple to solve. You probably remember this from the uh, easy antiderivative videos or perhaps just by remembering some derivatives, uh, but this is going to turn out to be the negative natural log of the absolute value of u. And the absolute value, of course, is because when we're taking the derivative of natural log, our domain is already limited to positive values of x uh, whereas when we're taking the integral and going backwards, we haven't really established that domain. So we need to make sure that whatever we're taking the natural log of is positive, of course, because of the limited domain of natural log. Okay, so now that we have this, we want to put x back in there because we want the integral of tangent of x with respect to x. And the whole with respect to x means that we should probably not abandon x at the first opportunity when we get excited to use our u's. Uh, that was an interesting sentence, uh, but let's get x back in there. So this is going to be, all we need to do is plug in x. We know that u is cosine of x, so we're just going to plug that in. We get ne negative natural log of the absolute value of the cosine of x. And that's going to be our antiderivative of the function tangent of x. If you don't believe me, we can just take the derivative of this function, and we should get tangent of x. So. If we say f of x is equal to, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this capital F of x 
is equal to negative natural log the absolute value of cosine of x. Okay, so how do we find the derivative of this? So already it's a little bit worrisome because we've got that absolute value in there, but as you'll see, it's actually not going to matter at all. So first of all, I'm going to look at this outside function here. We're going to do the chain rule. We're going to say that uh, f prime of x is going to, we're going to call that f of x. And that's going to be equal to, just pull the negative out, negative 1 over the absolute value of cosine of x, right? Because this is what we're dealing with here. And now what do we do? Because we need to take the derivative of this thing down here. So the absolute value of cosine of x, that creates an interesting issue. We need to take the derivative of that function. So I'm actually going to separate this out a little further and treat the absolute value. The function, I'm going to, I'm going to look at a function, uh, let's pull this out. g of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Now, if g of x is the absolute value of x, that means that the slope is either negative 1 or 1. So g prime of x is essentially equal to plus or minus 1, which is the same as the absolute value of x over x. That's our derivative of that function. So what we're actually going to have to do is multiply this thing that we have here, uh, negative 1 over absolute value of cosine of x, we have to multiply that by the absolute value of cosine of x over cosine of x. And now we can finally multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is going to be negative sine of x. And you already see the sines and cosines cropping up. Uh, but hey, look at that. We've got absolute value on the bottom, absolute value on the top. We can just cancel those out. That's pretty neat, right? And if you're not convinced that the derivative of the function absolute value of x over here, which we use the chain rule for uh, down here, uh, th that that is the absolute value of x over x, just think of the function, right? Because at values of x greater than 1, the derivative is going to be 1. At values less than 1, it's going to be negative 1. Look at this function. At values of x greater than 1, this is going to be positive on top, positive on bottom, and they're going to cancel out. x over x is going to be 1. At values negative, at values less than 1, I mean less than 0, I haven't been saying less than greater than 1, have I? Because that would be awful. Um, at values less than 0, x is going to be negative down here, and positive up here because we have the absolute value, it's going to be negative. So that this is indeed our derivative. But you'll see that the uh, absolute value of the cosines cancel out, and the negatives cancel out, and we just get sine of x over cosine of x, which is, of course, our lovely function tangent of x. And what did I forget? The plus c, but, you know, whatever, right? Never forget, no, don't, don't listen to me. Never forget the plus c. Plus c is there, uh, but I hope that it's sort of clear, um, even if maybe you didn't get the absolute value stuff quite as much, how uh, this odd-looking function over here is the antiderivative of the more familiar function, tangent of x. Thanks for watching.